It was only a few years ago that it seemed like Jared Leto would carry the torch of Heath Ledger's all-time performance in The Dark Knight. But after all the hype died down and Suicide Squad actually came out, we were left with a dud. Leto's future as a supervillain is now uncertain, to say the least. He probably will be replaced by Joaquin Phoenix. Let's break down what's happened up to this point and what the future could hold for the Clown Prince of Crime. In the beginning, it was Heath Ledger. After his iconic performance in The Dark Knight and subsequent death, a mythology began to take shape around Ledger, the circumstances surrounding his passing, and the role. Although it's far from fact, the public's consensus was that playing the Joker and getting too invested in the role is what killed Heath Ledger. His dedication to the role has become the stuff of legends. There are rumors that he locked himself in his hotel room for a whole month, and there's also his famous Joker notebook, which is referenced in the new version. Whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you... Stranger. After Ledger set the bar so high, the Joker became the ultimate role to test your acting chops. Jared Leto, fresh off an Oscar win for his super method and very controversial performance in Dallas Buyers Club, was eager to have a go. He was cast as the Joker in Suicide Squad. Predictably, Leto went all in with everything surrounding the role. He forced everyone to call him Mr. J while on set and would stay in character even while he was having his hair and makeup done. Apparently, he would even growl at the stylists. He took it yet another level entirely when he began to send what he called presents to his co-stars. Months before the movie started shooting, he made a few special deliveries to a table read. Margot Robbie, who played Harley Quinn, was gifted a live rat, and only 20 minutes later, a messenger walked in and plunked a dead pig on the table, its carcass full of bullets. When news of Leto's antics broke out, reactions were mixed. Although it was probably a living hell for his co-stars, perhaps this would translate into some type of on-screen chemistry between them. Not so, it turned out. The critical response to the film was about as bad as it gets. Here's a little quote from Vanity Fair's review. Suicide Squad is bad, not fun bad. Not redeemable bad, not the kind of bad that is the unfortunate result of artists honorably striving for something ambitious and falling short. Suicide Squad is just bad. It's ugly and boring. A toxic combination that means the film's highly fetishized violence doesn't even have the exciting tingle of the wicked or the taboo. Oh, how the movie wants to be both of those things. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really. It's simply a dull chore, a shapeless, poorly edited trudge that adds some mildly appalling sexism and even a soup song of racism to its abundant, hideously timed gun worship. But perhaps worst of all, Suicide Squad is ultimately too shoddy and forgettable to even register as revolting. At least revolting would have been something. Leto's role was central to the outraged response. The same reviewer lamented that, after all the method antics, Leto's Joker is barely in the damn movie, and when he is, it's entirely underwhelming. The next step for Warner Brothers was a no-brainer. When they were presented with a more thoughtful, human Joker, they realized that this was a convenient emergency exit. They had planned for Jared Leto to return in another Suicide Squad, and in his own standalone Joker film. But now they realized that Phoenix and Phillips represented a path towards film festival success. Eight-minute standing ovations, the Oscar and maybe even a billion dollars, so they cancelled the Leto sequels and went all in on Joker. All of Leto's practice for the role has no outlet anymore, since his films have all been cancelled. What happens next? Will the method become madness? Will Jared Leto become the Joker in real life? In short, yes. First of all, there's his aforementioned dedication to method acting. The, um, techniques that he used to get the rest of the cast in the zone for his scenes in Suicide Squad didn't really translate to the screen. They ended up just being freaky things that he did to real people in real life. He wasn't acting as the Joker, he was being the Joker. Then there's his band, 30 Seconds to Mars. When you look back at the band's emo past, post-Suicide Squad, you begin to realize his other inspiration for the Joker. Emo Joker. The band's most popular song, The Kill, has some seriously Joker-esque lyrics. Here's the beginning. What if I wanted to break? Laugh it all off in your face. What would you do? What if I fell to the floor? Couldn't take this all anymore. The longer it goes, the more similar it becomes. Look in my eyes. You're killing me. Killing me. All I wanted was you. The final words of the song echo Leto's current situation as it relates to his role as the Joker. Tried to be someone else, but nothing seemed to change. I know now, this is who I really am inside. I finally found myself, fighting for a chance. 
I know. Could Jared turn into a version of the Joker that's decked out in the newest season of Gucci? Could this really be who he really is inside? Hopefully not. But Leto is also 47 years old, meaning he's perfectly primed for a midlife crisis. But he's too rich for buying a sports car to be considered a crisis, and he probably already has one. So maybe becoming the Joker is his red Corvette. What do you think of Leto's Joker? Should DC and Warner Bros bring him back, or should they stay the course with Joaquin? If they don't, will Leto take his performance to the streets? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to Screen Rant. See you next time.